Spurs defender Ben Davis said we defended for our lives at Anfield on Saturday. Now we're looking forward to the big one on Thursday. Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp admits Antonio Conte criticism was wrong. Uh, links to Sam Johnston and Adama Traore again. Uh, also a link to Blackburn player Ashley Phillips. And reports are stating possible departures for Hoybier and Bergwijn in the summer. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all keeping well. In today's episode, I'll be going through all of the latest Tottenham news, all of the rumours and all of the reports. If you're watching this on YouTube, please do hit that subscribe button. Also hit that like button and that notification bell where YouTube will notify you every single time I upload a new video. If you're listening to this on an audio platform, do hit that follow button and leave a review if you can. Now let's start by talking about Tottenham's 1-1 draw away at Anfield against Liverpool in the Premier League on Saturday evening. Now on BT Sport, Glenn Hoddle, the co-commentator, gave Man of the Match award to Ben Davis. Uh, on the Tottenham Hotspur official Twitter, the fans voted Emerson Royale. And in the majority of newspapers on Sunday morning, they gave the Man of the Match award to Hunmin Son. Now, talking about Tottenham's superb defensive display at Anfield on Saturday and his fantastic block um, against Liverpool, my man of the match, Ben Davis, said after the game, in those moments, you just try and put your body in the way of everything. Even for their goal, that's what we tried to do. We did that to a man as a unit. We defended for our lives. This team has so much quality. It's tough out there. Everybody has to be focused defensively. I just got in the way of one. We defended well, but we're gutted about the goal and the way it went in. Our best opportunities were on the counter. I ended up getting up there in the end, but Sonny sold me a bit short. I thought that I'd just try and smash it in as hard as I could. On another day, we thought that we'd get something more, but it was a tough game and to come away from Anfield with a point, I guess you can't be too disappointed. Defensively, we felt organised and don't discount the wing-backs as well. In the system against Liverpool, the way that they play, their wingers play high and wide and we have to be switched on for those runs to get to the back post. I thought Sess and Emerson were really good and helped us out a lot. Ben Davis then went on to say we knew the importance of the result at Anfield and a draw continues our momentum. Now we're ready for the big one. We cannot wait. These are the matches that you want to be involved in. We probably wouldn't have expected to be here before the manager came in. He's put us in this position to really have a go. Now, my thoughts on Ben Davis's comments, he's absolutely right. And I'll tell you what, how humble of him just to say he got in the way of one. It was an absolutely superb block that he put in um, in the second half. And uh, I'll tell you what, I was so impressed with Ben Davis in that game. He was definitely my man of the match. There were some great performances. Eric Dyer, uh, of course, Christian Romero at the back, you know, with a diving header. I love that in that match. Uh, of course, the wing backs did extremely well. Sessegnon got on, uh, you know, got an assist for the uh, for Hunmin Son's goal. Uh, Emerson Royale was named uh, the man of the match by the Tottenham Hotspur fans on Twitter, which was absolutely lovely to see. So many really good individual performances in that game, and we're playing so well as a team. You know, to go to Anfield, and uh, you know, so many of us felt disappointed that we didn't actually pick up all three points, and that is how far we have come under Antonio Conte. He has now been in charge of this Spurs team for six months. I'm super excited going forward under our world-class manager. A report has just been published by the Evening Standard and now stating that Jurgen Klopp admits he was wrong to criticise Tottenham for their approach at Anfield after Spurs drew 1-1 against Liverpool on Saturday to put a major dent in their title hopes. A frustrated Jurgen Klopp aimed a dig at the type of football they played under Antonio Conte. Conte organised his team superbly and Tottenham came away with a deserved point despite only having 35% possession on Merseyside. After the game, Klopp said, I don't like this type of football. I think they're world class and I think that they should do more for the game. They play a world class team. They sit back. They drew against us now. They won against Manchester City. So the game plan works for these types of games, but they're still fifth. So that's how it is. In the report from the Evening Standard, it states that Klopp's argument was that teams of the calibre of Tottenham, with quality players like Harry Kane, Hunmin Son and now Dijan Kuliszewski, should stand and engage more. 
But the Liverpool boss has now backtracked on those comments and insisted he has total respect for Antonio Conte and the job he is doing at Spurs and his approach. Jurgen Klopp admitted his post-match comments on Saturday were influenced by the disappointment of having just dropped two points. On Monday, Jurgen Klopp said, would I say it again? No. I said after the game, they play like they play and are still only fifth. It felt good in that moment. But anyway, it was wrong. But it was just my feeling in that moment. I could not respect Antonio Conte more, what he is doing and how he organises his teams. Now, my thoughts on Jurgen Klopp's comments on Saturday and, of course, on Monday. Now, let me just put a stat here. Um, Tottenham Hotspur are the only team in the Premier League to have not lost against Liverpool and Manchester City this season. We have taken six points off Manchester City and we have taken two off Liverpool. Two wins against City, two draws against Liverpool. Now, if Jurgen Klopp wants to criticise the way that Antonio Conte sets Spurs up against these big teams, against Liverpool and Manchester City, we have done a great job. And of course, Nuno Espirito Santo actually managed us on the opening day of the season against Manchester City uh, to get three points against them on the opening day of the season. Um, But... You know, the game plan at Liverpool, it very, very nearly worked. It should have worked as well. You know, Hoybier right at the end, you know, we had chances to win the game. I felt that Liverpool didn't really have uh, a great deal, you know, by their standards in a Premier League game. Uh, defensively, I thought we were absolutely superb. Attacking-wise, I thought we were absolutely superb. And we were very, very unlucky not to win that game. And of course, Jurgen Klopp has come out and said that those comments were wrong. Um, but he hasn't actually said the word sorry. Another report has just been published about the possibility of Spurs signing West Bromwich Albion goalkeeper Sam Johnston in the summer. This one is from Football.London and they are stating that Spurs join race for Sam Johnston and Adama Traore as Antonio Conte set to rebuild. And according to the Daily Mirror, Daniel Levy is reportedly given the green light for the move for Sam Johnston. Levy apparently sees the goalkeeper as a bargain buy that can add quality to his squad while freeing up funds to spend elsewhere. It says that Sam Johnson has made more than 160 appearances for West Brom and in that time he has won three caps for England. His experience will mean that he can come in and compete with Hugo Lloris or potentially even replace him when the French star eventually moves on. And now for more rumours about Tottenham Hotspur possibly signing Adama Traore, who, of course, we were heavily linked with in the January transfer window. In this report from Football.London, it says that Spurs were heavily linked for a move for Traore in January before he chose to return to Barcelona on loan. And now that the Spaniard looks set to return to Wolves with the club looking to move him on. And Team Talk are reporting that Leeds and Tottenham Hotspur are now both in for him ahead of the summer. Now, my thoughts on this story, Sam Johnston, I've spoke about him many, many times on this channel because we keep being linked with the goalkeeper. I think he's a very decent goalkeeper and I think that he would do very well at Spurs. Uh, Adama Traore, uh, it now looks like he's coming back from Barcelona to rejoin Wolves after his loan spell. Uh, Would Tottenham Hotspur go in for him? I'm not so sure. Uh, You know, the reports were stating before uh, that this was a dead cert and we were going to be signing the player. Uh, And then lots of reports stated that Uh, Antonio Conte and Fabio Prasci said to Adama Traore that they wanted him to play wing back and he wasn't that keen. So this is going to be an interesting one. Uh, But as far as the summer transfer window goes, I'm expecting huge activity uh, in the summer months. Now, with that said, a report has just been published by the Daily Mirror and they are stating that Spurs are ready to sell Trio to hand Antonio Conte war chest. Antonio Conte is keen to make his mark at Tottenham this summer, but Daniel Levy needs to trim the squad first to raise funds. In this report from the Daily Mirror, it states that the immediate priority is striking a deal for midfielder Giovanni Lo Celso, which could set the tone for the whole window. Reports in Spain are stating that Antonio Conte has decided already he is not up to the standard of Premier League football. Now, of course, in the January transfer window, Giovanni Lo Celso left Spurs on loan to join Villarreal. And it says here no fee was set as part of the loan deal. And Daniel Levy will have to fight hard to squeeze the £42.7 million he wants out of the Spanish club's budget. In this report from the Daily Mirror, they are questioning whether midfielder Pierre-Emil Hoybier will be a Spurs player next season. It says Hoybier is another oven-ready deal to be struck after Newcastle United expressed an interest in the player Spurs signed from Southampton for £15 million in 2020. 
But while Daniel Levy would hope to squeeze the club's new owners for a double your money, £30 million deal, there is no appetite at St James's Park to be seen as easy transfer pushovers. Also in this report, it is linking us to a number of players in the summer. It states the only concrete links with transfers coming in have been squad players until Tottenham's Champions League future is decided. Sam Johnston of West Brom could be a good cup price understudy to Hugo Lloris, while they could also lead Manchester United and Chelsea in the race for Ashley Phillips of Blackburn. Finally, in this report, it talks about Stephen Bergvine and the possible departure in the summer. In the report from the Daily Mirror, it says the failure of Maurizio Pochettino to land the Manchester United job may just be what Daniel Levy needs to get his full £22 million valuation for Stephen Bergvine. New Manchester United boss Eric Ten Hag is a huge fan, but rather than persuade his new employers to go for the winger, as reported by The Athletic, his existence as a potential rival bidder is likely to push Ajax into coming up with the asking price. Lastly, it says Stephen Bergvine has been hit and miss since arriving in the Premier League, but at 24 years old, is sharp enough to add bite to the attack of the young Ajax team Ten Hag left behind him. Now, my thoughts on all of these rumours from uh, various reports there, uh, the main one being the Daily Mirror. Uh, I fully expect Stephen Bergvine to leave. His comments uh, you know, are very, very clear. He doesn't play enough at Spurs. He's very frustrated. He wants more game time. So I fully expect him to leave in the summer. Giovanni Lo Celso, uh, fully expect him to go as well. You can tell a mile away uh, that Antonio Conte is not impressed at all with the likes of Tongion Dombele and Giovanni Lo Celso. Uh, it, it could be very difficult to try and offload those two players and get the money that we need and, uh, and require. Because uh, let's face it, £100 million uh, you know, between those two that Tottenham Hotspur paid in the last couple of years. And I've got to say as well, if Pierre Mihoibia ended up leaving Spurs this summer, I would be extremely surprised. I really, really would. He is a real leader. He is a warrior on the pitch and someone Antonio Conte clearly trusts and clearly likes. Thanks for watching and thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're watching this on YouTube, please do hit that subscribe button. Also hit that like button and that notification bell where YouTube will notify you every single time I upload a new video. If you're listening to this on an audio platform, do hit that follow button and leave a review if you can. And I'll see you on the next one. Stay safe and well. Come on, you Spurs. Hi, I'm Bill from Football Prizes. I'm just here to tell you about the weekly prizes that we run on the site. Prizes such as our signed memorabilia, match day tickets, trips abroad and more. Just go to our website www.footballprizes.co.uk